Welcome, welcome. Just want to make sure that my voice is coming through okay. And if it sounds good, then we will go. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Adinda. Let's go. Welcome to the webinar, everybody. Today we're going to talk about um, pure support and resistance trading. Naked trading at its finest. If this is the first time for you to be here, um, welcome. My name is Walter Peters, and my charts generally look a bit like this one right here. Um, I wrote the book called Naked Forex. You can get a lot of trading systems on there if you want, or you can certainly attend these webinars. Now, today we're going to talk about something that's a little bit different. It's a very um, tricky system to kind of get the hang of because it it takes a little bit of practice to see it, but once you see it, it's like, you know, seeing a constellation or whatever. You're Once you see the Big Dipper, it's easy to see the Big Dipper every time you look up in the sky, like a lot of these patterns are. So if you don't know how I trade, typically what I do is I'll trade where I look for, I find support and resistance zones on the chart where price has repeatedly bounced higher or bounced or, or reversed off of and traded lower. And then I wait for specific patterns at these spots so that I can get into a trade. And I know this is, you know, this sort of price action trading or naked trading, it's become kind of a really like popular way to trade. Uh, but what we're going to talk about today, tonight, I know for me here in Asia, in Australia, but for a lot of you, it's daytime. Um, what we're going to talk about today is a perfect style of trading that for someone who has a job. And the reason why is you can literally place these trades into your platform and then like months later, literally months later, they get triggered. They can get triggered when you're away from the chart, doesn't matter. Um, and I'm going to talk about a couple of different ways you might tweak it uh, away from the way that I trade it. But this is a really, really great way to trade. And I'm excited to share it with you because it's just, it's just one of those things where once you, you know, once you start trading this way, it's really hard to change uh, because it's, it's a, um, it's somewhat empowering to see the market from, from this point of view. So let's get into it. All right. First of all, I'd like for somebody here who wants to guide us and direct us, tell me which chart you would like to take a look at. Any of the charts. If I can pull them up on my platform, I will, and I'm happy to, and we'll use your chart as an example here to get into this system. And then I'm also going to talk about areas of the system that you may want to improve or tweak to fit your own beliefs, which is really one of the hallmarks of my, my most... Uh, successful trading students, they've all done that. They've all taken a, like a piece of, from someone, me, whether it be me or someone else, and they've tweaked it and made it fit into their overview, their beliefs, the way that they see the markets. And that's really kind of the key to trading something long-term. If you just take it off the shelf and say, well, this is the way Walter did it, it's not usually going to work. It's going to have to be something that you feel like it makes a lot of sense. And um, and once you do that, you know, it's you'll be able to trade it long term. So, which chart should we take a look at, guys? Any charts that you guys like at the moment? Is there one that you like, or we can, we can just pick one randomly as well? Um, it's a pretty tricky. Wow, isn't that interesting? We've been watching this chart for some time, and again, it's starting to look like this trend line is holding. Tell you what, when the Euro Swiss goes lower, it is going to be quite an event. I'll be keeping an eye on that one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use, I'm going to get a fresh chart, and I'm going to go ahead and use the Euro Yen. And we're going to go ahead and use a funky template just because I can. So the pink candles are the ones that are bearish. I'm eagerly waiting from a half hour onwards. Cool. 
Well, I've only been here five minutes, Kareem. Um, so that's cool that you were able to get in early. So this is what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to draw the four-hour Euro-Yen chart. And I'm going to highlight the areas of the chart that I would be interested in trading this system. Okay? <laughs> that's pretty funny that there aren't really any. Well, yeah. Fortunately... Unfortunately, okay, well, I'll show you where they are, even though the market's kind of already gone there. These have kind of already happened, but I'll show you kind of how, how it works, okay? Some of these actually probably the market wouldn't have been to yet. All right, I'll show you three right here on the Euro Yen, all right? Okay, all right, so what I've done here is I've drawn boxes, three boxes, and we'll number these so it's easier to keep track of them. We'll go ahead and call this one, we'll call this one two, and this one over here will be three, all right? Boom. Awesome. Okay. So here's how this works. Uh, when the market hits a particular level, it can do essentially a couple of, it can do basically three things. When the market hits a support and resistance level, it can move away from that support and resistance level quickly. It doesn't matter whether it's finding resistance or support. It can basically touch it and just, bam, move away from it. Kind of like when you take two magnets and you spin them around until they're repelling. It could be like that. The other thing it could do is it could go there and it could wait a while, right? And then it could decide whether to break through that support and resistance area or move away from it. it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter if it's breaking through resistance or breaking through support. It can basically go there and kind of sit there for a while and decide later what it's going to do. Or um, it can go there and uh, you know, get, kind of give you a really good pattern, like a double top or a double bottom or something like that, like a whammy or a moolah, some sort of a, a, a you know, a pattern that makes, makes it easy, right? So either it's going to go there and move away quickly, kind of like a V bottom or a V top, uh, which would be, for example, which would be like this one right here. So this would be an example. If we were to go back in the chart, we found that this was a level of support and resistance, which is the 123.70 level, basically. And we were to find that this was a level of repeated support resistance. It went there, it touched it, and it moved away quickly, right? Um, but what I've identified here on this chart, this Euro-Yen 4-hour chart, are areas where the market, number one, red, number two, green, number three, blue, are areas where the market not only has found a support and resistance area, but it went to the support and resistance area, and then it sat there. And this is critical, because these areas you must be able to identify to trade this trading system. Okay, this, by the way, this trading system isn't in the Naked Forex book. It's, it was developed af long after I wrote that book, but I want to share with you how it works. And this is exactly how it works. The market goes to a level. It moves away from that level after sitting there for some time. Okay? So it doesn't actually break through the level. It has to go there and move away from it, but it does it after it, do you know, after it sits there for some time, basically. Okay? So that's basically how that works, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna draw my lines on these levels. All right, so is everyone clear on what I'm looking for? I'm looking for a spot where many, many candles have bumped up against that support and resistance level. Many, many, as in 
you know, five, six, eight, ten, something like that. Not two, not three. It needs to be in this case. You like here. I'll zoom in for you guys. Let's look at all three of these. Okay, we'll look at one, two, and three. Okay, so number one, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight candles that I would count as touching the zone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Probably nine. Whatever. A lot. Right? Have touched this level. Uh, and then. And there there's squishy levels here, which is why I put a box here, okay? It's not just a line. It's not a, a certain pip level or whatever. It's an area. Same thing here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven or eight of the last nine candles have basically hit this level at number two. Number three over here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine out of the last 11 candles have also found um, this level. Now, that, now the market broke through this level, okay, which is okay. We can still trade these, but um, you have to make sure that the market doesn't come back immediately. So see how many candles it was here before it came back? It was 23 candles before it came back. Ideally, ideally, really, it will do something like it did right here, okay? where the market prints the area, uh, hits the area, and then moves away from it. But sometimes you will actually have an opportunity um, to trade these when it sits there, and then it breaks through, and then comes back up and touches it from the other side. Okay? All right. So let's talk about each of these. Um, number one. Let's talk about number one. The market printed an area of support and resistance, and the, there were many, many candles that sat there, and then it moved away from it. Okay? So that established number one as an area. Again, I'm not really into the numbers or whatever, but we'll call this 120.60 as a level. Now, what we do is we put a buy order at this level. Now, what I, lo what I love to do is find the lowest low here, which looks like it's 120.53, and try and trade off of that. So I might even put it at 120.50 in this case. I'll put an order at 120.50 to buy, which is three pips lower than that low there, okay? So I would have bought right here at 120.50, and I would have a, uh, actually I'd have a 160 pip stop loss on this pair. And we'll talk about other pairs because I, I don't, I don't and, and this is an area where you might be able to optimize, okay? You might find that, you know, a different a stop works better for you or whatever. So in that case, we were able to withstand this 96 um, pit pullback. I didn't take this trade. Uh, and let's see what happens here. How deep did it go? Yeah. We're able to withstand this whole, this entire pullback, which went about 120 something pips. Okay, 120 pips deep. So 160 pips stop actually was able to stand this. The reason why I use 160 pips on the volatile pairs like pound New Zealand, pound yen, pound Aussie, euro Kiwi, euro yen, um, those one um, is because they're so volatile and they move quite a bit. So I, I give them a little bit more room. And I did I actually thought this one would have been stopped out, but it did survive. Now, the first target is at 200 pips, okay? <laughs> so... Uh, but if it goes 160 pips in my favor, I'll move the stop loss to break even. So in this case, 150 is right here. It's moved 80 pips in my favor. And I think we're just kind of sitting over here, right? So it's basically in a bit of a drawdown. It'd be in about 25, 30 pip drawdown from where it is right now. Um, it never went 100 and uh, it hasn't yet gone 160 pips in profit. So there's two targets. The first target is at 100 and, sorry, is at um, 1.25 R. So is, if you're not familiar with R, that's the idea from Van Tharp. And the idea is you, you, you basically talk about your trades and you, you manage your trades in terms of what's the risk. The risk is 160 pips and the reward is 200 pips for the first trade. There's two lots, okay? So that's 1.25 R, which for the volatile pairs here, that is the equivalent of 200 pips, okay? That's target one, that's the first lot. The second lot or the second position, however you wanna phrase it, that one is actually at 
2.5R, right, which is 400 heads. Like that, okay? All right. Question. What have you got marked for future trades? Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you. We'll definitely look. If you guys have any charts that you would like to have a look at, I'll, I can show you. Now, um, actually, the average is 2.25. Actually, the yeah, average is... Uh, Actually, I have this wrong. Sorry. Apologies, apologies, apologies. Four R, guys. My mistake. The average uh, works out to be about 2.25 R. That's why I messed up. It's around 2.3 R, 2.25 R is what your average winner is. But um, 4 R is actually the... Uh, uh, 640, yeah, 640, sorry. 640 pips is what we're looking for here, okay? So if you have equal position sizes, if you think about it, 4R plus 1.525R is 5.25R. You divide that by 2. 5.25 is 2.625 is basically your average R, okay? if these are equal sizes. And I'm not saying that you should do that, but that's how I do it, okay? So position one is 640 pips away, which is 4R, four reward to risk, and, um, or sorry, position two is 4R, position one is 1.25R. Now I move to break even when I get 1R though. And we haven't seen that yet in this, you wouldn't have seen that yet in this trade, okay? Maybe it's gonna get stopped out, I don't know, I don't care. But the point is, um, it, it there's nothing to do with this trade. And look, this trade was, triggered all the way back here on February 6th. We're now at February 14th. So it's been over a week and you don't really have anything to do. Like there's nothing to do here. The only thing you, the only point at which you'll have something to do is when it goes to 160 pips in your favor, which is all the way up here. 160 is right around this area. Okay. 122. I think it's actually 122.10, but whatever. All right. So that's number th that's this one right here. Number two, what, what happened here? Let's take a look at what happened here. This again, consolidation. Is that a support and resistance level? So what I look for here is, you know, where's the highest close, okay? Highest close is right here at 122.70. I might actually go at 122.80, 122.85, something like that, but whatever. We'll go ahead and put the sell order here at 122.80, okay? So 122.80 is the sell price. 160 pips higher would be 123.80, 124.40 if I'm right, which would put the stop. Uh, 122.80 is right here. I want it to just barely click in. Yeah, it's all, it's way, way, way up there, 124, 40, whatever. So it survives this 50, 60 pip pullback. It's moved 160 pips in our favor. Um, so it's at break even, okay? Once it did this wick down here, it didn't quite make 200 pips, but boom, here it does right here on this candle, which, which also, funnily enough, triggers another trade. And that actually happens um, more often than you would think. <laughs> that another one triggers in the opposite direction as you're getting out of another one. You could even have them on at the same time. Uh, but they're usually spaced out quite, you know, quite well. So in this case, what happens is this candle not only triggers a buy, but it also gets you out of that first sell. Now you still have another sell that's 400 or 640 pips away, but again, you haven't come close to that yet. Well, you've, you've been a halfway there, but 
you know, the 640 pip targets way, way, way down there. It takes some time for these to mature. Okay, so boom, um, but it's at break even. If it gets back up to that level, then obviously it's at risk free now. So it's either going to make 4R or it's going to make nothing. That's how. Now, for some of you, you might actually want to use a trailing exit uh, or something like that, maybe a less aggressive target. I really like the idea of having 4R or a break even trade. It's like a trade that never happened. Now, it's no fun to watch it go 3.9 R and then stop you out of break even. That's, there's no doubt about that. But at the same time, I think it's really critical that you understand taking you know, these trades and having 1R trades and 2R trades, that's not going to work. The win rate will be too low, and what will happen is you will lose. <laughs> so you need to have some sort of strategy for being aggressive, whether it's a trailing exit or an aggressive target or whatever, some sort of way of managing it so that you get those big winners. Otherwise, it's going to be really frustrating to trade. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Number one, again, I know that was number one right there, right? Yeah, that was number one. We already talked about number one, which was this trade over here. Yeah, so let's talk about number three, which would be clicked in here. Um, it's just so awesome when it does this. Um, so you can have a support level and then it breaks through it eventually. It's defined. It breaks through it and then you take the resistance trade off it. Or you could have a resistance um, level identified and then the market comes back up and it offers resistance again. It doesn't really matter. You can do both ways, okay? Both ways can work. But in this case, you can say, well, um, you know, I'm looking for a higher candle up here. Like this one's kind of good right there. What's that close at 121.38? The high here is 121.32, but you know your spread's going to probably get you in there. So if you had a 121.35 or whatever, you're probably going to get in. What's nice about this one is it just barely clicks in. We'll say it was 121.35. It barely clicks in, and now look what happens. The 121.35, you just barely get in here, okay? It's basically on the back of the spread. And it hasn't moved 160 pips yet in your favor. So once it gets down to this level down here, uh, it becomes a risk-free trade. So this one still has some risk. It could still come up there and hit it. All right, is everyone clear on that? So it's a 200 pip target on the first position, 640 on the second, so 1.25R. 4R. Now let's talk about a normal sort of pair that's not as volatile as the euro yen or the pound yen or whatever. Let's go ahead and look at, for example, like the Aussie. Okay, let's do that. And we'll talk about future trades. Unless you guys have another one you want to see. If you have another one, let me know and let me know quick. Otherwise, we're going to go with the Aussie here. My funky template with the dark blue and the pink. All right. So let's talk about this one. Now this is interesting because the Aussie is in such a strong trend right now. So I've got the four hour chart here. I'm going to back it up and what I'm looking for here are consolidation areas, right? Now I don't really want to trade one if it's a consolidation area and then it's already hit it. I kind of want to trade it if it's the first time that the market's hit it. You know what I mean? And so we had a consolidation area here. The market moved away from it and then it came back up and hit it here and then it kind of broke through it. So it would have been stopped out. I don't know if it would have been break even. No, on these ones, so in the less volatile pairs like the Euro, the Pound, the Aussie, I use a 80 pip stop. I use a 100 pip target for the first position and a 320 for the second. 100 pip target for the 1.25R, right? And then 320 for the other one. And that is the normal way I do it. Now, is there anything magic about an 80 pip stop? Not really. Might a 60 pip stop work? Maybe. 100 pip stop? 75? Maybe. All those things, you know, you can test those. So, what, you know, I don't believe in over optimizing. Like, you might go, well, dude, a 60 pip stop works way better on the Singapore dollar. That may be. 
but I, that's not my belief. Like my belief is not to over optimize something. I don't, I don't believe in that. I'm very, very anti, you know, over optimization. I think that when you start like getting it down to the pip or whatever for different pairs, I think you're, you're running into, cause it might work really well from, you know, 2001 to 2017. And then all of a sudden now, you know, it breaks down in 2000, you know, 17, 2018, 2019. I think you have to be real. I, I like blunt force sort of ideas, like really simple ideas that seem to work across the board. Maybe they don't work as well as they could, but they work well across the board and that tells me that there's something going on and there's something that says yep this is a true truism of the markets okay so look at this here's an area here on the aussie where we've seen some support a lot of candles have hit it let me see one two three four out of seven one two three four five out of uh seven here so a lot of consolidation here where the market kept hitting it now it moved away from it, so if the market comes back here, what might I do? Well, if the market comes back to this 76.15 level, again, the lowest close here is what? 76.10. So I might put an order in at 76.10 or 76.05 or even 76 even, right? To buy right here, blammo, okay? Where's the stop loss? Obviously, it's down there at 75.20, right? Where's the target? Obviously, it's up there at 77 even. That's the target, right? Well, obviously, 77 even and then 79.20 would be the other target, okay? So that's an example of a level there. I would not use this um, level over here that's been established because why? Because we've already tagged it right here and just, just wondering if we hit it, we would have survived the 15, 20 pip pullback. It would have gone 40 pips in our favor, and then we would have been stopped out, uh, you know. Yeah, stopped out up here, basically. So that would have been a big fat loser. Um, and other ones, here's another one right here. It's a really nice one. See how the market printed all this consolidation here? A really strong support level. So I would look for another trade to buy at 74.60. 74.60, okay? Down there, where would the stop be? Where's the stop gonna be on this one? 73.80, right? 74.60. This is the kind of thing that I'm talking about here. Now, again, if, if this doesn't make sense to you that you can pre-identify weeks, months in advance even, days, weeks, or months in advance where a level is, where it's likely to bounce, and I'll be honest with you, this is a really good strategy for when the market is not really in a strong trend. When it's in a strong trend, it's gonna blow through these levels and you will get stopped out. But when it's not in a trend, which is most of the time, the market's going to hit it and it's probably going to give it at least, you know, the hope is that we can at least get 100 pips out of it or move to break even if it goes 80 pips in our favor. That's the hope, is that we can get an 80 pip bounce. So that's, that's the whole thing about this stuff. That's the whole deal, right? Boom, right there. Okay, here's another one right here. There's another level of resistance. So we would be looking for support where? Right around 7370. That's another level where we could buy 7370. Stop loss would be down there at 7290. Boom. Okay, you getting the hang of this? Does that make sense? We can move to another pair now. Let's move to another pair. Um, Canadian dollar. Let's do the Canadian dollar. Canadian dollar is blammo, boom, bam, and the weird, weird template. Dark blue and pink. Oh, this is an awesome chart. This is like, like my dream chart for this system is when you get these. Okay, here you go. Oh, you see, so you had one right here. Look at that. 
if you got tri uh, triggered into that one, maybe you didn't. I, I may not have been triggered on that until this candle, in fact, and then, then I would have stopped out. But I might have had mine down here, and that would have been a 130 pip movie. Yes, I would have been stopped out, you know, basically immediately. Usually, if it's a bad trade, you get stopped out really quick. And if it's a good trade or a break-even trade, you usually hang on for a couple of days. That's the uh, the way of the world with this. Let's see if we can find another one here. Um, what I would probably look at, it's a little bit tricky because it sags a little bit lower in that first touch. All these candles here. So I would probably go with a buy at 29.80. A buy at 29.80. Notice that you've got this wick down there. Kind of flubs things up, but it's nice to have it too because kind of confirms this bounce here. So all these candles kind of sitting down here. It's it's a bit of a wide zone, but I'll be looking to buy at 29.80 and my stop will be at 29 and then my target will be at 29.80. Sorry, 30.80. 30.80. 80. stop is at 29, target's at 1.3080 up here in this area up here. Um, see if we can find any others to the left here and see there's one right. This is actually the best one right here. That was really nice. It's too bad that didn't, if it did get triggered there, I'm just curious to see it would have, it would have got you to break even. Look at that. Let's say that you did get triggered there. If you, you would have probably barely been triggered there. Let's see. Right here, right here. So um, again, I'm looking at this level, guys. And then we'll, we'll open it up for questions in a minute, okay? So send through your questions about the live markets and we'll get into those right now. Or, or about the system. This is called the first touch belly. First touch belly. Let's say that you did get in this one. You would have been just barely brushed in on the spread. And it did go up about 85, 90 pips in your favor, in which case you do get a chance to get out at break even, assuming, of course, you weren't sleeping when, the, when this big red candle printed. Um, so you move to break even, you get stopped out on break even. So it's not a full loss there. And then, obviously, it comes back up and gives you the brilliant slam right there. And then at this stage, you're up. 160 pips, so you've already hit target one, and you're halfway to the 320 pip target down there. All right, so let's just do one more. And if you guys have any charts that you want me to look at, just fire them. Please tell me the time frame too, not just the, the pair. Pound yen is bloody awesome. Bloody awesome. Okay. So on the pound yen, I'll just do it on this chart. Basically, uh, there's a great support level here. So that would be a buy down here around the what? Oh, it looks like about the 140.30 area for a first touch belly trade down there. The reason why it's called first touch belly is because uh, Nick um, in our private form, he, see, we have this first touch trade and um, we were, you know, I always talk about how support and resistance areas are like bellies, you know, like, you know, if you were to brush your hand up against a beer belly, you might actually just touch it and then, woo, pull your hand away real quickly. Like that happens, right, in the markets. It'll just bounce off with, woo. And sometimes um, if you were to push into a belly, maybe you push into it and you actually squish into it before you realize, whoa, whoa that's a belly. I'm going to pull my hand out of that. You know, and that's kind of what we're talking about here where 
it's squishing into it, and then finally it gets through the belly. So this one, it's different to the first touch system. It would be a buy around here. Again, that would be a 160 pip stop, so a 200 pip target. So it would be a 200 pip target, 160 pip stop, and then the second target would be 640 pips away. Okay. Um, and then I would have another one here as a cell. So it'd be based on mostly these candles over here, but you can also see to the left here how there's resistance as well. Basically all these support candles. So if the market were to get back up here, uh, it could be a sell at 142.20, for example, right? And you'll see that that lines up with the past support and resistance. So makes a lot of sense. Okay, is that cool? All right, guys, so are there any charts that you would like to have a look at? Any charts that you like? I'll show you the ones that I'm in. All right, so I've got the Kiwi trade where I sold Kiwi off this kangaroo tail here that's, that's highlighted with the big arrow. Um, and this was a sell at 72, 73. The stop loss was above the tail up there, but now it's been moved to plus five pips. So it's essentially a break even result if the market stops me out. But I'm hoping that we can hit 7120. 7120 is my target for the Kiwi kangaroo tail. And my second target is down here at 7040. So that one's. Uh, essentially risk-free at this stage. Okay. A couple of other charts I really like. I really love the Aussie Kiwi right now. The only issue I have with it is that it has some resistance coming up, like some serious resistance in about 40 pips. So as much as I'd like to buy it, I'm going to wait and see what happens when it gets up there. Because if it, if it can break through, we'll, we'll probably get a nice bullish trade. If it breaks through, spend some time up here at 108, comes back down, bounces off 107.40, and then I'll go long. But in the meantime, I'm just going to watch it. Watch it get up there. Okay. And where's my New Zealand CAD trade? Or chart? New Zealand CAD, New Zealand CAD. So my other charts. Okay, I'll, I'll pull one up for you. Here's another one that I'm in right now. Oh, don't tell me it's not on here. Don't tell me it's not on here, man. Really? Uh. Well, it's in a downtrend, and I'm just looking to sell. There it is. Boom. I'll show you. So on this one, it's basically how that moved. The reason why I like this one is because it is a beautiful downtrend. And essentially... It's going down, consolidating down, consolidating down, consolidating down, consolidating. So either we're going to make a step down now, or we might swing up a bit, kind of make a little peak like this one did, and then go down. So I like trading it when it makes a little peak and then closes below the low of that little peak candle, which is in this case this one, and it closed below it there. Not there, but there. Um, I like trading those. So in that case, if you had your stop above, that wick, you'd be looking at 30 pips of risk and you'd be currently up about 50 pips. You know, 1.6 R, something like that. So that is the New Zealand, the New Zealand CAD. I really like this one. If you look back, what I would say is that it's highly likely in my estimation that the New Zealand CAD is going to get to 90 to 90 and probably even 92.50 here. So those would be viable targets on any sort of a four hour or one hour trade. I would be looking for some hefty targets to achieve down there because that looks like a beautiful trend to me. 
So that's the New Zealand CAD. And I've got like 26 pips of risk on that one. 25, 25 or 26 pips of risk. So if that goes 120 pips, it's going to be like a sweet, you know, 5R trade or something like that. Um, and if it pops me out, I'll get in it again at the next swing high. So that's that one. The other one I want to show you is oh, pretty cool. So you know what? A fresh chart is going to make it a lot easier to see. I'm not going to mess up that. I don't want to do that. I want to give you a fresh chart and let you guys see exactly how I view this. So this, again, is going to be a funky dark blue and pink chart. But here's what... Here's what in, here's what's very interesting to me. A good friend, the Aussie Yen. A couple of things. Number one is that it seems like we've already closed. We're already above the important swing highs. Like we've already spent some time up there. Now it's debatable. Under I understand it's debatable whether or not we're actually have found support because it made this little move down here. But again, this could just be a, a sort of a triangle pattern or a wind sock or whatever you want to call it. It's kind of I like to call them wind socks because it's usually like this big flag pole, and it's like this wind sock up at the top, and it usually means boom, it's going to continue onward. Now it doesn't always do that, but oftentimes when you get a really bullish move, and then it wind socks up like that, it'll go again and make another leg up. But the, here's what I will say about this: if it clears this high right here, I'm I'm going long, baby. I'm in. I'm all in. Now, if it tightens up here, consolidates, and then falls and poops out, well, bummer. Uh, we could find some support down around this area, which is the 8550 area. That's that's a definite possibility, or 8530. Uh, that's a definite possibility, too. But because, potentially, we're already above, we've, we've already had candles close above these swing highs over here. That's a very, very bullish pattern to have that. So whether or not you believe we're actually bouncing off these highs or if we're consolidating, I think the longer this goes on, the more likely the consolidation windsock scenario wins out. Either way, it's a bullish pattern. And either way, if, if the market can clear this swing high here, uh, it, 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 it seems like a great idea to buy. So I'm actually going to buy if it gets to 87.51. So that's my other deal. Um, and, and please know that if that happens, it's a free shot to 88.70, and then probably the best spot to find the sellers come in is going to be off this level here, which is 90.40, 90.40, 90.50, around that area is where the sellers will probably come in. Again, everything about this chart is bullish. This is a very bullish chart. You see that on the weekly, it printed a reversal kangaroo tail. It went lower, and then boom, it just came right back up, and you've got all these weekly wicks that are bouncing off of or finding support on these highs over here. On This is the weekly chart. That's a really bullish sign. So everything I like, everything I see in this chart screams, buy me, buy me. So I'm probably going to end up getting clicked into that trade at some stage. Okay, guys. That's basically it from my point of view. Um, the New Zealand CAD, the Aussie Yen, the Kiwi, those are kind of my favorite. Oh, the other one I want to show you before we wrap it up uh, is the Aussie. The Aussie USD has got a really nice uh, bullish pattern happening here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this trend line right here. See how the market has a resistance level up here at 77? And the trend line is squeezing the market, keeps pushing it back up to 77. It keeps hitting it, pulling back, hitting it, pulling back, hitting it, pulling back, hit it again, pulling back, and making another move up there right now. Uh, usually, when that happens, what do we get? We usually get breakout. This usually, and I know 77 is probably not the best place for it, maybe 76, 90, or whatever. Point is, this is usually the sign that you are going to squeeze, pop, run, go, jump powerhouse through that level and go higher so that's basically another so how would you trade this there's two ways one uh, the the aggressive trader is going to have some sort of order up here above these highs so that might be as high as 
77.10 or something like that, okay? And then the stop loss will probably be below this swing low here. So that, that's this swing low right here, 76.30. So that's an 80 pip stop. That's an 80 pip stop on that one, 80 pip stop. Otherwise, um, you wait for it to trade up here, come back down and give a bullish candle bounce, kind of like what I was talking about on the Aussie Yen a minute ago, off this 76.90 level. So you wait for the actual bullish candle and then you get in long there. But it has to spend several candles up here. It can't just be one or two candles up here. It has to be three, four, five, 10, 20 candles up here and then comes back down and bounces, okay? And that's all I've got. Those are, those are the ones that are basically on my radar. Aussie, uh, New Zealand CAD, Aussie, Aussie Yen, um, and, oh, well, the Kiwi, the Kiwi is the one I'm already in, yeah. And I mentioned the Euro Swiss, right? Euro Swiss is another one. This looks like a very bearish uh, pattern here. It's probably going to pop and go lower. A lot, if you look at the sentiment or the open position ratios, there are a ton of people who are buying Euro Swiss. So that's another sign that it's it's probably going to fall pretty hard. So that's another one to watch. And that's all I've got. Thanks so much for spending time here. Thanks, EB and Thomas, Larry. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate your time. Have a wonderful trading week. Okay? Take care. Bye. See ya. Bye.